adding very little latency to our API. So at P99 here, we had an initial edition of 279 milliseconds. But after that, we've got a P99 of four milliseconds, maybe four milliseconds again here. Yeah, 4.6 milliseconds. Another cold start there at 180 milliseconds. And then another 4.5 milliseconds. Typically, this authorizer is adding single digit millisecond latency to our API. <laughs>
is this authorizer simple response and custom authorizer request. So these are the actual payloads, the actual event formats that will be passed to our Lambda function when we are using Lambda as a custom authorizer. When it actually comes to our Lambda function itself, we've got our async main method, as you'd expect, and we are setting up the Lambda runtime down here. And we're saying that the request that comes in is a Lambda event of type API Gateway V2 custom authorizer V2 request. And then we're just calling our handle or function. Within handle auth, the first thing we're doing is we're looking at the cookies and we're actually checking that we have a cookie called session token. The way cookies get passed into this Lambda function is that there'll just be an array of strings or in Rust's case, a vector of strings. And that string will be in two parts separated by an equal symbol. The first part will be the name of the cookie. The second part will be the value of the cookie. So we're splitting the cookie on the equal sign and we're checking that the first part of the cookie is session token. And if it is session token, then we're actually going to return the token itself. Once we've got that token, of course, if the token doesn't exist, then we're going to return a authorized false response. If the token is true, then we're actually going to look that up against DynamoDB. And we're doing that here. We're building the kitty attribute by formatting using the session hash. And if we go back to our authorization service, we can see that that is how our partition key and sort key is being built in our authentication service. And then if DynamoDB returns a valid response, we're going to return authorized true else we're going to return authorized false. And then we need to return a response in a specific format that API Gateway understands as an authorization response. And that's what we're doing here. We're returning is authorized true. We're using the simple request and simple response format for API Gateway. You can get a lot more specific with how you return this authorization response. The word has been nice and simple true. This person's authorized and you can also return this optional context object. This can just be JSON and you can use this to add some additional information that will then be passed to the context of your actual Lambda function. So in this case, I'm returning the user as James. And this is all there is to a custom authorizer from an application perspective. Like many things with Lambda, you're simply just taking an event payload in doing some work and returning a response in a very event driven way. And I realize this is a pretty simple example of how you might be doing authentication, but it's a really useful way of adding any custom auth to your application. When it comes to actually deploying this, if I just open up my AWS SAM template, instead of simply having the event type with a path and a method in our SAM template, because we're adding some additional functionality to API Gateway, namely the authorizer, we actually need to add a specific piece of configuration for our API itself. So when we specify the event source for our API, we're specific passing in a specific API ID. And if I now scroll down and find that here, you can see my HTTP API is a resource of type HTTP API. And all I'm adding additionally is some custom authorization logic. I'm adding a Lambda authorizer to this API. I'm enabling simple responses so that I can just pass true and false in my response. And then I'm passing in the actual ARN to use as an authorizer, my actual Lambda function. And then I'm setting across the entire API, my default authorizer to be the Lambda authorizer. Every time I add a new root to this API, the authorizer will be automatically set as the Lambda authorizer. And you see, we've got our authorizer, authorizer function here. Again, the login password is just being stored as an environment variable. Do not do this in production. This just allows, if you're testing this, you can run a SAM deploy command and pass in a password that you want to use to test this application. If we then look at our login function, because remember we want our login endpoint to not be authorized. We want people to be able to access 
the login endpoint without being logged in, of course. So we still specify the path as login, the method as any, because remember our service ad rendering is, ad, is uh, managing the routing. And we still pass in the reference to the API ID in the exact same way we did for our actual application on the function. The one difference being is that we're overriding the authorization at a specific root level. So we've got our default authorizer set on the API itself to be our Lambda authorizer. But then on our login function, we're overriding that set actually on this endpoint. I don't want an authorizer at all. I want this to be accessed publicly. So let's just have a quick look at this in the console. If I flip over, flip over to the AWS console, and you can see if I look at my HTTP API, I have an authorizer enabled here. I've got two routes, one with my Lambda auth attached, one with no authorization attached because I don't want any authorization on my login endpoint. And then I've got my authorizer defined here, specifying my Lambda function. I've also got my cache set to zero here to make this easier to demonstrate and test. Ordinarily, you would have some kind of cache on your authorizer so that your authorization doesn't need to happen every single time. If I now go back to the root of this API resource and I just grab my API URL there, and I'm actually going to open up a incognito window and I'm going to try and access my home endpoint. This will return and say unauthorized, of course, because I am not logged in as opposed to my endpoint over here where I am actually authorized. And if we have a look at the duration of the execution of this authorizer function, you can see it's adding very little latency to our API. At P99 here, we had an initial edition of 279 milliseconds. After that, we've got a P99 of four milliseconds maybe four milliseconds again here, yeah, 4.6 milliseconds. Another cold start there, 180 milliseconds. And then another 4.5 milliseconds. Typically, this authorizer is adding single digit millisecond latency to our API. When we think about adding custom authorization to our APIs, Rust can be a really valuable tool to have in your tool belt because it allows you to add this custom authorization and authentication logic whilst adding very little latency to your actual API itself. That's all for this video. I hope this has given you a takeaway for areas in your systems where you can maybe consider practical usage of the Rust programming language. As always, if you've liked this video, please like, please subscribe, and I will see you next time for more serverless AWS fun.